The war in Ukraine is a powerful reason to enlarge and improve the EU. The horror of two world wars prompted France, West Germany, and others to link arms and create what is today the European Union. Seventy years on, war has returned to the continent. Out of the rubble in Ukraine. Something akin to the sentiment that moved the EU's founding fathers is stirring again. The talk now is of admitting as many as nine new members, including Ukraine. Joining the world's most successful club of peaceful, prosperous democracies would set that war ravaged country, and fellow aspirant members in the Western Balkans, Georgia, and Moldova, on a new and promising path. For the EU itself, it would also be nothing short of historic. Completing a grand continental union and marking the end of a process that started with victory over the Nazis. Bar one or two future applicants, perhaps one day including Britain, the shape of the EU would broadly be settled. But the way the EU works would have to change. Expanding the EU from 27 to, say, 36 will be tricky. But after a long time when the idea of enlargement was dormant, Croatia, the most recent new entrant, joined a decade ago, it is back on the agenda. Leaders from across the continent, including aspiring new members, will meet in the Spanish city of Granada on October 5. The next day, those already in the club will lay out what reforms will be needed to keep the show running with more, and more diverse, members. An arduous process will follow. The applicants and the EU machine will both have to change. A mooted date of 2030 for the completed enlargement is optimistic, but worth striving for. Leaders considering the union's future shape should remember that enlargement has been its most successful policy. Grand projets like the euro, the single market and the regulation of tech giants matter. But much of their value comes from the fact that their scope extends beyond France and Germany to Finland, Greece, Slovakia, and Spain. Imagine how much less muscular the EU would have been in helping Ukraine had it not already embraced four countries that border the war zone. Further enlargement could increase Europe's geopolitical heft, as France's president, Emmanuel Macron, once a skeptic of expansion, now seems to acknowledge. The EU can no longer afford to string the nine would-be members along by letting their applications drag on without a realistic hope of them joining. Leaving European neighbors in a grey zone opens the door to those who would destabilize the continent, starting with Russia's Vladimir Putin. This unhealthy dynamic has fed the cynical and sometimes dysfunctional politics of the six countries of the Western Balkans and the other three applicants. None of them will be easy to integrate. Georgia. Moldova and Ukraine all have Russian troops occupying chunks of their territory, as did Germany until 1990. All the current countries bidding to join are deemed only partly free by Freedom House, an American think tank. Turkey, though technically still a candidate, 